welcome back to my space uh, I know it's been a while I have not been making content I'm very happy to be back here and to be able to make content I, I first of all want to I want us to have a very serious discussion about curriculum I've talked about this so many times and I feel like it's time for me to give you the unfiltered version about our curriculum so I feel like we try to make our curriculum so difficult and um, I've read through so many government actually uh, written curriculums and what I can tell you is first of all and I'm going to be controversial right now when you're teaching a film student and you're teaching them with the wrong camera you're conning them when you're teaching a video student and you're teaching them with a film camera you're conning them that's the truth of the matter and then when you're teaching somebody techniques and you're not teaching them business what you're doing is that you're already telling them i've already blocked your doors so you can only become an employee who told you the same student cannot become a film distributor cannot even in, innovate and come up with their own netflix or amazon prime who told you that why why do you have to decide that for them why can't you give them all the skills they need and i'm talking about foundational courses because before you specialize, then you need to do foundational courses. And I think the other thing that disturbs us a lot is that we fail to continue to do research and development. I'll tell you what I mean. So, trends are changing. Before, before 2020, before the, the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic, we, we, were, we were not even, we, not, not many of us knew there's an app called Zoom or Google Meet. We used to prefer to meet physically and in person to teach. But the COVID-19 pandemic and that stay at home period accelerated us to five years after. So we are like living now the way we could have been living in 2025. So things are not the same. You cannot continue to teach the same way. The economy is becoming harder. Many of the Kenyan students are now have to work as they go to school. Why can't we then make flexible programs that are really experiential and that really help the, 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 the students to be able to do practicals and they're only needed in class when they're really needed to do some group work or to interact with one speaker so that we create flexible programs, learning programs to encourage people to learn. Remember now we are living in the information age. Even those techniques that we pretend to teach in class, people can learn on YouTube. People can learn how to operate a camera on YouTube. People can learn even how to do 3D animation on YouTube. So you, you can't pretend that now you want to force, you know, you want to stay the same way you were in 2019. So the big question I have right now is how many schools have changed their curriculum? Because it is mandatory. If you are running any school, be it a primary private school or a public school, after 2020 and the changes that have happened, you should incorporate some online learning in, in learning programs in your teaching. So if you have not changed your curriculum, that shows complacency. In a few you know, years time, people are not going to be having time to go for in-person classes. I work with my students every day. They're from all around Africa. I'm not able to bring all of them in person every day, but I was able to expand the training program due to embracing new technologies. Why can't we embrace new technologies? Because once we embrace new technologies, we get these things that we are looking for. The three is, for instance, my students, I don't have to worry about their exposure level because I have put them in class with students from nine African countries. And with these students from nine African countries and mentors from all over the world, these guys have someone to ask, how are you doing this in your country? So they're getting exposure. They're getting a network. If they want to go to Zambia and do a project, they don't have to worry about it. They have a network of professionals that they can work with. So all these things just require a little bit of commitment and understanding what education is. Now, there's, you know, writing a good curriculum, and then there's also implementing it. We need to start implementing it and let me just summarize what's wrong with the Kenyan curriculum. I'll just summarize it. 60% theory, 40% practicals. For the most practical program, 
written and certified by Tibet institutions. It's 60% theory, 40% practice. It doesn't work like that. Go to the website of New York Film School, Film Academy, you'll see they'll say, learn how to make a film by making a film. You know, the exam is you having title credits on different films. That's the exam. Bake the cake. If you can't bake the cake, we are out, you know? So, if these guys are making 5,000 films in a year, and in your school you're making one film in a year, then these guys have people like Martin Scorsese, you know, coming to visit them, Francis Ford Coppola, and other coming to visit them and talk about their movies and review their movies with them. And then, now, you, first of all, if you have a school and the teachers you're using don't have not made a film and it's a filmmaking school, what you're doing is wasting the students' time. Let them be taught by professionals. If you've never done something, how can you teach me about it? That's where we first go wrong. We have a lot of qualified PhD lecturers who've never been in the industry. How can you come and teach me how to write a good film if you've never written? Just tell me. Think about it. How do you come and teach me how to write and you've never made a film yourself? Have you been on a film set? That should be the first requirement when you're recruiting a trainer in your organization because you're not being what is it called? You're not daydreaming. This kid is going to go to the industry. And if this kid is going to go to the industry, what are they going to do? They are going to do the work professionally. So if you're showing them how to write based on what people have written on YouTube, on what people have told you, you're not going to be the best teacher. It's painful, but it's the truth. And actually in this segment, my main aim is just to give my own point of view. Because I feel like people are hypocrites. And I feel like a hypocrite myself because I've been quiet for a long time. Yet I want to say some things. Because these things need to change. And if we don't talk about these things, then they'll never change. Let's sharpen each other. I'm not saying this to criticize anyone. I'm just saying this based on how I've, what I've learned, what I've observed. And I'm also open to criticism. If somebody comes tomorrow and tells me, Oh, Rachel, I don't like the way you run YFP Africa. It's not... Yeah, it's not perfect. I'm looking to learn. I'm looking for new methods of making it better. But we must talk to each other and tell each other. What are we teaching, really? Your parents are struggling right now, today. People have gone back to school. Parents are struggling to take their kids back to school. Some don't have the school fees. You know, some kids are at home crying. But what are they crying for? When they go back to that school, is that going to help them to be successful in their lives? Don't you think that the biggest legacy we can leave to our next generations is to teach them that, yeah, you can run the world, you can innovate, you can lead in climate change, you can lead in innovation, you can lead in the technology space, you can lead in the creative industry space. And to lead is not a joke, it's to make sure these students are becoming better. They already know what they want, you guided them, they know what they want, they have a plan, and as they wake up every morning, they are going towards their plan. They know what they are working for. And that's how to guide them. And that's why mentorship is also important. Coaching, personal coaching. When you see a student behave in a particular way, do some certain things, you guide them. Because you want them to be better at future. How many students are we producing? Let's be honest. How many students are we producing in all the courses that are taught? Who don't even know how to pitch? Now, if you don't know how to pitch, even if you're employed by a company, you can only be a low-paid staff. Staff, You cannot even be a manager. Because in an organization, there's so many departments which are competing for funding. You've got to be able even to pitch your board or your CEO. Pitch the CEO with your ideas. So, then you find you've gone to school and you don't even know how to pitch. You don't even know how to dress. You'll never get a promotion, even if you're employed. And if you have a business, it's going to fail because you don't have the skills that you need to have. So who is to be blamed? It's us, the educationist. We need to change the way we see education. And education is not only when you go to class. I cannot be forced to teach people in a class for 60%. And that's why I don't give academic certificates and I'm not interested. I'd rather give a professional certificate which gives my students 90 to 95% practicals. 
and I'm sure this student, when they go to the marketplace, they will make it. I tested this with Youth Film Platform Africa for the last 12 years. I've had an 80% and above job absorption rate for my students in the industry. And I don't need even to push my students after graduation. They're good. Why? Because I did So, uh, as, I, as I finalized uh, this uh, first episode, I want us to talk about, you know, what can we do better in terms of curriculum development? The truth is, what we need to do better is to give more practical, more professional experience, invest in opportunities for exposure and experience. We cannot lock our students to Kenya, and yet we have the internet now that can connect the world. Nowadays, it's, it's possible to use Zoom or StreamYard app to bring a speaker from any part in the world. Spend time networking so that your students can get to know what is happening in other parts of the world. It's very, very important. And then let's get back to rewriting our curriculum. Let's have learning objectives that aim to make our African people innovative, bosses, they can fit in employment and they can bring value to an organization because they are leaders. Let's create leaders. What we need so that you can catch up with the rest of the world and stop being a third world country is to be able to improve on our education so that our doctors are the best. When we have a virus, our doctors will be able to actually come up with a, with a vaccine before any part, part, other part of the world can be able to do that. For them to be able to do this, they need to understand business. So who told you that a doctor does not need business skills? A doctor would need business skills if they have to thrive in the marketplace. Why? Because even for a doctor to engage in research, for example, they need to write a proposal. They need funding for the research. Medical research is so expensive. You cannot fund yourself. They need to be writing Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So whoever is cheating doctors that when you go to school now, you just have to be a surgeon, or all those things, it's a lie, it's a lie. That's a wrong curriculum. That's how you know your curriculum is wrong. What solution am I suggesting? I'm suggesting this. Teach the technique, whatever it is. If it's accounting, teach the technique, but also teach the business as another course that helps this person to stand out, to fund their projects, to be able to go out, out there and work with the rest of the global giants. So if you're able to do that, to balance and then to also make sure you give students experience where they are making these projects. They are learning how to do something by doing it. That's the thing. You learn how to make a cake by baking many cakes. So if somebody has been baking a cake for the last 10 years, their cakes will be very good. If somebody has been baking a cake for the last two years, their cakes will not be the same as the cakes of somebody who has been baking for 10 years, learning. Because experience matters and that's why people buy experience. Even when they're paying, they pay you more money when you're more experienced. Because the more you've been on a job, the more you've learned, the more now you know how to exist, the more you can comply, the, the less of a liability you are. In my set, if I find somebody who's not experienced, I don't like to deal with them. These are the people who get you in legal trouble. They will not come to set on time because they don't know anything. That's why it's important for everyone to actually learn these things. Because once you learn, then you grow and you become a better person. So I just wanted to end this, um, uh, the way I see it video here today. I'm going to continue. If you guys want it, tell me whether you like the content on the curriculum. Tell me if you have any questions maybe I can address concerning our education system, to, which is actually right now crap. People are learning techniques which you can learn online. My friend, do not be cheated. Go and learn how you can make money with your skills. So if you find a curriculum that is not balanced, enroll in two programs so that you can get the professional and you can also get the academic. Don't get the academic and walk around waiting to shine at your job. It will not work. That's why people go for workshops. That's why people go for master classes and other things to get the professional training, which is more practical and more applicable in the industry where you want to work. Remember, growth is a gradual process. You have to invest in it. And as I always say, invest many hours into building your craft. Out.
always investing 9,000 hours in building my craft. One day, I will feel that I've got, got into a place where I have really built on my craft and I can do something really great in this continent and in this world. Because right now, I consider each and everything I do an investment. And I hope that sincerely speaking, every Kenyan, every African should be having this conversation about the curriculum. The curriculum produces either all the dunderheads we have around, either all the stupidity we have around, or it will produce a productive nation that will build its culture, build its tourism, kill corruption, be able to solve the challenges that keep to confront our continent. If you're working with people who are not smarter than you, then you're a dump. If you're working with people who are smarter than you, that means you're going somewhere. So how can you work with these people if they, we have a trashy curriculum which cannot even produce somebody who can be a boss? Imagine growing up all your life, investing 20 years of your life in education, and then you find out that that whole education has just given you one gift to be an employee who cannot even rise up the ladder it's a waste of your time it's a waste of our youth's time and i wonder how the next presidents and the next you know leaders of business civic leadership will be if they're not smart and it's not because they're not smart it's the way we teach them they paid their school fees they did their job let's teach them the right thing let's give justice to education because education will change the future of Africa. See you again next time, uh, next week, same time, uh, with another edition of The Way I See It uh, from Rachel Wainena. Remember, it's my perspective, and uh, I'm looking forward to your interaction. If you not subscribed to my channel, I want to remind you again, please press on that subscribe uh, button below. Also, you can click on the notification button to know any time that I publish my videos. You can give me a thumbs up or you can even comment on the comment session. All comments are welcome. It's a safe space. And thank you for coming into my space. See you next time. Thank you.